Hey, welcome to the first Genuine Questions live stream. The topic of this video is going to be the last one that I'm going to do for now about the Facebook fights, like conversations that I have with liberals about stuff because I'm still working on the one about the uh, World Economic Forum and Klaus Schwab and those videos are I think super long and boring so they take a while to trim down and edit the parts that I want to use. And then before I go through this last fight that I had, I just want to address something that was said in the comments of the premiere of the last video that I thought was important. And one of the viewers, I think it was No Hope, last week said, don't get drawn in to their argument. Like that's what they do is try to bring you down to their level and then they just keep moving the goalposts. So it's a fruitless battle. You're never going to win when you try to talk to a liberal about something. So I say, one, I do like find those conversations fun sometimes depending on the topic and when I have the time to go back and forth with them. I don't like expect to be able to change anybody. Well, the person, I don't expect to be able to change the person I'm talking to necessarily like their mind, but maybe there might be an open-minded person like scrolling through the conversation and reading it that might see like this blatant hypocrisy and the fact that nothing that any of these people say ever makes sense. But I think it also goes to prove the larger point that these people, they are propagandized by stuff when you ask them a follow-up question or to deviate at all into their own line of thinking and away from these like pre-programmed talking points they have. They're, they don't make any sense and their entire arguments just fall apart. So this last conversation that I had that I want to show you guys was a few months ago uh, and it was about student loans and everybody with all these liberals were super excited when Joe Biden said he was going to cancel everybody's student loans. Now first uh, my prediction at the time was that they were never actually going to do this so we didn't need to worry about it that much anyways because it seemed like something that they were just like saying that they were going to do to try to get votes before the midterms and then as soon as the midterms were over they were going to be like yeah Supreme Court says that we can't do it and that does seem to be what's happening but for the purposes of this particular conversation that I want to show you I did try to understand their line of thinking here so my point isn't even to argue about whether or not I agree, agree with student loan forgiveness the point is I'm trying to just ask them a genuine question about where did you get your information from regarding this topic and none, none of them can answer that question. They just like dive into what a terrible selfish person I am because I didn't immediately jump on board with let's forgive everybody's student loans. What a wonderful idea. All right, so this is the Facebook group that I've talked about a couple of times before. It's local to where I live up here. Everybody in there hates me and starts like petitions to try to get me removed from the group and stuff. It's pretty funny. So this guy shares a screenshot of this Facebook post where it says, imagine I loaned you $100 and I said I would charge $1 per day in interest until the balance was repaid. After 300 days, you have not paid me anything. So now you owe me $400. Now imagine, I say, since I'm such a nice guy, I will forgive $100 of your debt, so you only owe me $300, and the interest continues. Do you get that this wouldn't actually cost me any money? I'm not actually spending another $100. I'm just erasing money that never actually existed. That's how this student loan forgiveness works. It's not actually costing anyone any money. Your taxes are not paying for this because no one is actually spending any money. The amount of debt being forgiven is less than the amount of debt that was created by capitalized interest on the original loans. Okay, so I get the point of this Facebook post. And so I just respond to it, say, that's a really cool screenshot of someone's Facebook post. But too bad it's not what the actual policy is. The plan is that they will take that $100 you owe them, and then they're going to crowdfund it amongst all the taxpayers. So those lenders are still getting paid. So in the original Facebook post, this guy's acting like, yeah, you just forgive the interest. Nobody has to pay it. 
But it was my understanding at the time, and still is, like, if they ever decide to go through with this, that they're not just erasing the interest off of people's debts. It's being paid for by tax dollars, which means people are paying for it. And they're still getting their money. They're just spreading out the amount of interest that's owed to a bunch of people that never took out the debt to begin with. Some girl jumps in. She's like, you understand how interest works, right? It's not policy. It's math. Yeah, if it's working the way that it said in the screenshot where we're forgiving the interest. Or if it's like, hey, we'll take the amount of money that you owe. And now everybody's going to help you pay for it. Like, that's, that's a policy issue. That's not math. But So I said, I'm responding to the screenshot of the Facebook comment that Beans, that's the nickname that I have for the guy that posted that Facebook screenshot. I'm responding to the screenshot of the Facebook comment that Beans posted where he says that they are just going to wipe away the interest amounts so it's not actually going to cost anyone anything because the government is saying, we just won't charge you the interest anymore. And I'm explaining to Beans that that's not what the government is doing. They're still collecting the interest. It's just now being collected from all the taxpayers instead of the burden falling on the person who signed up for the predatory loan. If the student loan forgiveness plan is what the screenshot is suggesting, that would be great. That's cool. Just get rid of the imaginary money. It's not costing anybody anything, so why not? But the fact that their forgiveness plan still rewards the predatory lenders at the expense of taxpayers is the policy I was referring to. And I definitely understand how interest works, which... Well, this part's not exactly true, but where I said that's why I didn't take out these predatory student loans to begin with. Like, I also had nice parents that helped me out too. So, if my mom's watching and my dad's watching right now, like, thanks guys. Appreciate that. So, the handmaid comes back and she's like, actually, I did understand what she meant. And I think you misunderstood what Beans was saying. The money that is being forgiven was only excessive interest. It wasn't part of the capital that taxpayers contributed to is only real when it's actually received. Wiping out interest just means the government is making less money on that debt and they weren't actually making money anyways because people can't afford to pay it. Meanwhile, if erasing the fictional interest debt keeps someone off welfare, that does save taxpayer money. So I repeat to her again, because she's obviously not getting what I'm saying, that if they are erasing fictional interest, that's cool, but everything I've read about the plan says the opposite, that interest is still being collected. It's just now being spread out to all the taxpayers instead of the ones who borrowed the money. But if what you and Beans and the guy in the Facebook screenshot is saying is true, then the loan forgiveness plan will cost zero dollars because they are just choosing to not collect money that they never lent in the first place. But given that there's a plethora of articles talking about how much this will cost the taxpayers, it certainly seems like the government will be still be collecting their fictional interest debt. So, is there anything that you have read, other than that guy's Facebook screenshot, that indicates that this isn't going to cost the taxpayers anything? And I shared a link to just one of the articles I was talking about, where it says the student loan forgiveness plan could result in a $2,500 burden per taxpayer. Now, if I remember correctly, I think this article quoted the American Taxpayers Union because that's what this new person jumped into the comments to complain about. And the link that I shared wasn't from the National Taxpayers Union, so I think that's who uh, NBC quoted in the article. So she's like, the National Taxpayers Union think they might be a tad biased, (laughs) not a great record, and then shared some Facebook like fact check thing They said in November of 2011, they posted something that um, was false about Obama. I also want to say, too, that, like, she's annoyed that there's, like, the National Taxpayers Union. Like, I thought that liberals were supposed to be super pro-union about stuff. So, like, unless it's a union of people that you don't like. Like, yeah, the National Taxpayer Union is biased in the sense that they're going to cover shit about taxes and be concerned about their taxes getting raised, that's the entire point of their organization. If you take this woman's logic, then like, why would we ever listen to the NAACP about 
African American issues. Like, don't you think that they might be a tad biased? Like, why would we ever listen to the teachers union about education issues? Like, don't you think that they might be biased? Like, yeah, that's what these organizations do and focus on. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to lie and make stuff up about being charged extra taxes just to get people mad about stuff. Their point is they don't like the extra taxes, so they are writing articles and alerting people to the fact that there are these extra taxes. That doesn't make any sense to me that this is like her chief complaint about the source, but, you know, typical liberal shit that they do is just harp on like one tiny little issue so they can ignore all the actual points of what you're trying to talk to them about. Said, so you found one thing that they wrote that turned out not to be true 10 years ago. And so you just blindly dismissed the article, which was reported on by another organization, without any counter source that explains where you're getting your different information from. So just because a group has bias that doesn't make them liars, the bias may influence the types of stories they cover and whether they view those stories positively or negatively, but it doesn't automatically make the story untrue. But, like I said, I was reading up on the plan on CNBC, and this is what I found, which drives with many other articles out there to choose from. So, again, do you have any sources or articles that indicate that the government is just going to waive the interest? Or are you just going to stick with, "Uh uh-uh, as your counter to that? So, this is why I call, like, the one guy Beans, anyways, because he looks like the kid from the old Even Stevens show. So, that's why. That's his uh, picture there. But he comes back and tells the handmaid or whatever, like, oh, I agree with your analysis of the National Taxpayers Union. But even if I, me, he's talking about me there, he's like, even if she was right, I have no problem paying $2,500 to make sure students aren't literally effed over in debt for the rest of their lives. And then another guy jumps in to be like, you know, not just people pay taxes, right? I could calculate the cost per five-year-old. That doesn't mean each one would be paying that much. I'm like, yeah, correct, but the point is it's going to cost something. Every article about the topic is about how it's going to cost whatever amount of dollars, like uh, trillions of dollars. So I'm just asking, is there any source besides a screenshot of the random Facebook post that being shared that is saying that this is going to cost zero dollars because we're just going to erase the imaginary debt that they got from the interest. I understand all the points about how each person isn't actually going to have to pay $2,500 because of different tax brackets and corporate taxes and averages and estimates and blah, 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 blah. I also understand the argument that the $2,500 isn't a lot of money to make sure people aren't crippled under debt. So I'm a better person than you are because I'm willing to pay for it. I get it. Right off onto your high horse. I'm not trying to argue with you about who's the better person here. I'm just trying to figure out where you got your information from. So my question is, are they actually erasing the interest payments, which would cost nothing except for unrealized profits for predatory lenders? Or is the interest still being collected at the expense of all the taxpayers? Because I would love it if it was the former. But every article I see about the topic suggests that it's the latter. And I'd like to know the facts because it's going to affect my opinion about their student loan forgiveness plan. He's like, it doesn't cost anything because no money is being exchanged. Nobody is paying anything. Yeah, that's my question that I'm asking. Are they going to still, is the government going to take over the cost of these loans and still pay themselves back essentially because the government the, took over the student loans so they're the lenders at this point so are they going to increase everybody's taxes and the plan's going to cost trillions of dollars like all of the articles and everything is suggesting that it is which means they are charging people for it it's just going to become a tax burden on the public or are they going to say hey you just don't owe us that money anymore I'm asking the question where are you hearing that from So I tell him, it could work the way that you're saying. It could also work where the lenders are still getting paid their interest and the money is just coming from the taxpayer instead of the borrower. So I'm just trying to figure out which method of forgiveness they're implementing here. On the one hand, we have every single news source that has covered the topic suggesting that it's the latter. 
And on the other hand, we have your utopian worldview or gut feeling that they're going to do the former. He says, the only lender is the government. Which, again, I already addressed. Like, yeah, the government's the lender, but the government still has the capacity to make sure that they get this money by raising everybody's taxes. Well, what does that have to do with anything? I just ask, again, for like the 20th time now, are they forgiving the interest? Or are they going to crowdfund it off of taxpayers? Because every article about the subject suggests the latter. And I just want to read the article where it says that they are forgiving the interest. Because I can't find that anywhere, and I just want to know why you guys think that that's the case. So Beans comes in to, like, quote something here. Like, he did not write this, this is, but... So I'm going to, like, skip over some of it, because it's just a lot of, like, U.S. laws and section codes that he's citing here. He's like, normally a minor cannot be held liable for a contract they sign. However, in 1992, the Higher Education Act was amended to permit eligible students to sign promiss promissory, pro whatever, like sign contracts for their own federal student loans. As such, student loans represent one of the few exceptions to the so-called defense of inf infancy. So I guess in like pretty much any case except for student loans, a minor can't sign a contract, you can't like legally enforce a contract that a minor signs. But they passed this one law that now says, just in the case of student loans, they can do it. And herein lies the problem. It is absolutely mind-boggling how you people get into arguments when you have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Classic case of projection. Because this dude never knows what he's talking about and never shuts up. And then he ends it with, college is predatorily expensive and should be free. I, say, I don't disagree with you on that. I just don't think the solution is to pass off the debt to people who didn't sign up for said predatory loans in the first place. And then I thought about what I said and I came back and I was like, well, I disagree that it should be free. It just should be affordable. But federal student loans should be interest free. So, yeah, I don't think the government should be like making money off of the interest payments for student loans. If you want to have federal student loans available to people and it's like that's fine but then the person pays back what they borrowed and then that money's there for like the next generation of people to go to school and get educated i can understand the value of having like an educated population and all that stuff so i can understand their argument for why they want to have that i just don't think then that the government should be putting these people in these positions where they can never pay off these loans for the rest of their lives and they're making money off of it. It shouldn't have a for-profit motive for doing this. And also part of the reason too is the way like, I've never heard of a loan before where you have to co-sign for it like on the front end and then you also have to, or you have to like pay for it up front and then you also have to pay for it if the person like defaults. So it's like I'm paying for your student loans up front because for the government to have that money to pay for your student loan, like the government got money from the taxpayers. So the taxpayers are paying for your education up front. And then if you can't pay it at the end, like now they're just going to make the taxpayer pay for it twice. Like I don't really want to pay for your college the first time. I definitely don't want to have to pay for it twice. Like, you can, like, twist my arm and I can understand the argument for round one. But I'm not also paying for it once you default on your loan. It's ridiculous. Beans rides back in on his high horse and is like, well, that's the difference between your people and my people. We don't mind paying a negligible amount more on taxes to help people survive. Said, see, I don't mind my tax dollars being spent to give someone a student loan. I do have a problem with people being taxed to provide the loan on the front end and then getting, pay getting taxed again on the back end when it doesn't get paid. Maybe one or the other, but I've never heard of co a co-signer having to pay for something up front and then pay again if it's defaulted on. And it seems to me like the people who provided the predatory loans should be the ones to eat the cost. But they're still getting their money, they're just now getting it from people who never took out the loan in the first place. Beans is like, that's fine with me. Let's do that. 
is that one of the arguments I've heard against the government funded model that is used in other countries that I thought was interesting to consider. I don't know if I think it's good or bad. Just that it's interesting to consider is that the people in those countries are beholden to whatever professions or fields of study that the government deems a good use of resources. So other countries don't have gender studies majors or college level basket weaving classes or degrees in stand up comedy. The government is just paying for them to go to school for professions that they deem to be useful. So you would have to weigh and balance whether you want people to be able to go to college for free and be stuck in a career dictated to them by the government or if you want people to have the freedom to pursue their individual passions. And now I'll take it even one step further into the liberal, like, Beans' typical line of thinking. Well, you know, because in Beans' line, like, half the country is a racist, like, half the country's Nazis, and people like Donald Trump and Republicans just want to take over so they can you know, get rid of, like, anybody that's not a straight white person. Like, that's what Beans is, thinks is going on in the world. So trying, again, to relate to him on his level and, like, make him just think about this just a little bit more so I was like now I'll even take it one step further and say that some may even be motivated by hatred or wanting to marginalize certain groups of people so there is an argument against these entitlement or social welfare programs or whatever your preferred jargon is to call them that isn't rooted in bigotry or selfishness or hate like you insinuated earlier this afternoon because there are some people concerned about handing that much power over to a government that's filled with corrupt people who are motivated by self-interest and or hate. Because throughout history, every time someone evil like that has taken power, they have always told the masses that they were doing whatever they were doing for the greater good, and then people believed them until it was too late. There are a plethora of issues with the privatized education and healthcare systems, I don't disagree, but I do disagree that the solution is to trust the corrupt people in power with control over those aspects of society. So, because they often say, like, don't give a politician power that you wouldn't want to be used against you. So, like, don't have a department of disinformation, even though you like it right now because Joe Biden's in charge and you think you're saving the internet from QAnon or whatever you ju you're using to justify your censorship, don't support it now because at some point, the people you don't like are gonna get an office and have their turn and then they're gonna have a department of disinformation. So do you want, I think the example I heard one time was like, do you want Kellyanne Conway to like be the minister of truth? Like, no. So don't give that power to the politicians you do like because somewhere down the road it's going to be used against you. And if right now you're cool with like letting them be in charge of all of the education and student loans and <clears throat> deciding who gets to go to college and like what professions are okay to study, then at some point it's going to be people that you don't like and then, but you've already given them the power. So just think like a little bit more long term about the crap that you're saying and not these like short-sighted solutions that you think make you a good person because you're willing to spend $2,500 to save someone from crippling debt. I guess my comment continued. I was like, because what happens when someone who wants to commit genocide gets in office or some racists decide to start bribing politicians because they don't want them to provide health care to gay people or black people or people who've had abortions or people with disabilities or whatever group of people that they decide that they don't want around anymore. So maybe that's just me being paranoid, but there is a litany of historical examples to extrapolate from as well as numerous countries currently under tyrannical control so I'm not sure if I consider it naive or arrogant when people just assume that Americans are so virtuous and enlightened that history could never repeat itself here. Like, there's no way that the United States government would ever try to use propaganda against their citizens. Like, oh, it was just like dumb German people or like racist German people that fell for uh, Hitler's propaganda. It's like, no, that's what happens throughout history that's like what they do uh, readers digest version of my comment was just like so not everybody who disagrees with your solutions is a terrible human being 
some people might be wrong, but they still have the long-term interests of people in mind. And the Democratic Party doesn't have a monopoly on virtue, like they seem to think. And then I said, thinking about what you posted earlier, about how the law changed in 1992 that allowed minors to take out education loans, and you couple that with the fact that there's a law that says student loans are like the only loans that can't be cleared in bankruptcy, it makes me wonder which politicians voted for those laws and whether or not they were paid off by any banks or lending companies for their vote. I was like, and given that most of these politicians from 1992 are still currently in office, maybe they should be the ones to have to pay off everybody's student loans. And I actually did go and look it up the other night. And in 1992... I think I found the right bill that Beans is referring to, the Higher Education Act of 1965. I think that's what he was talking about. Uh, an amendment happened in 1992, and Joe Biden voted for it. So the guy now telling you he's going to make all your student loans go away, uh, just, you know, vote for him and you're going to vote for Democrats in the midterms. Well, we'll do it for you. He's also the guy that, like, set you up to be in this position in the first place. So, um... I just don't get how people are like so gullible like am i the only one that remembers from like i don't know back being in school and they have like those shows on the 90s like boy meets world and stuff and like somebody would always run for class president and then and they like say like stupid shit like oh we'll just have like recess all day and like no homework allowed and no school on fridays and then like everybody like votes for them and then they not, can't then once they're in office they realize like they can't do it and everybody like, gets mad at them and like the lesson of the after school special is always like it's better you know not to like lie and like make these false promises and that because people are gonna get mad it's like in real life um nobody gets mad they just keep voting for the same people they keep doing that to them and like each time wholeheartedly believing that this person is going to fulfill their promise now like the fact that this is real life and like not this nice like disney channel after school special um, in real life, it seems that not only are they lying to you to get your vote and then don't do the things that they tell you that they're going to do, like, in, when they're in office, then they actually, like, do the exact opposite and set you up to be screwed over for their own profit and gain. And I don't get how, like, any topic, just pick one of them. You don't have to see it in all the topics, like, one thing that you care about, like, if you're super into the student loans, wouldn't you be like, oh... Biden's like the guy that's created these problems or like if you're upset about the prison population and black people disproportionately being targeted by the police and all that stuff like well, well Joe Biden's like the one that did the 94 crime bill and like mm, mm, so it's like everything that I hate about America and the system that I want to change um like Joe Biden is directly involved in it but for some reason they think that voting from for president he's now going to be the guy that's going to like get rid of all of it and make it all go away and it's like the dumbest thing i've ever heard or the f or the federal loan should have the interest part forgiven as in erased not transferred to taxpayers if someone has already paid off more than their original balance and they're just working on the compounding interest that debt should be cleared and a refund should be given if appropriate like if you've already overpaid on what your student loan was supposed to be because, again, I don't, I didn't have one, so I don't know exactly, like, what the interest rates are and how they work, but I've had friends that have told me that, like, yeah, they have paid off more than what their original balance was, and they still owe their original balance, like, so it does seem like it's a pretty effed up system, and if you've done that, and say, like, you owe, I'm just gonna make the numbers easy, but, like, you owe $100,000, you've paid $100,000 in interest, but you still owe $100,000, like, that person's debt can be done, okay? Like, that, I'm fine with that. They've paid off what they borrowed. So, that would, like, that's just my compromise for everybody on, like, what I think a fair solution would be. People that got the predatory loans, the government's the one that screwed you over, so, yeah, you can get out of that one, but... The people who didn't get involved into the predatory loan scheme aren't being penalized in any way for your debt. 
I said, if it's not a federal loan, then the private predatory lenders can suffer the consequences of their poor lending practices and they can go out of business. So that way, people are paying back the debt they agreed to, not the predatory amounts, and the only people suffering from the consequences are the lenders and the government who created the situation, instead of further crippling people under the weight of inflation and creating unnecessary divide between people. I'm like, who's a you know good person and better than other, your people? My people are willing to pay extra taxes so everyone's life's better. It's like, well, everyone's life's worse when you're poor and you can't afford electricity and gas and food. So, big picture. Everybody cares about people. And it's super easy when you just think that, like, everybody that disagrees with you just must be, like, a hateful, evil bigot. You drive me nuts. But I was talking to my boss about this topic, and he was like, he didn't, I guess, know why, why the loans were predatory in the first place. Um, and I was trying to explain it to him, and I didn't think I did a very good job. I felt like I needed some visual aids. So, but this is like one issue where the liberals really did, like, to an extent, change my mind. I'm obviously not on board 100% with their, like, crap to just, oh, everybody just pay more taxes and be happy about it because you can, like, sleep well at night knowing that you're a good person for doing it. Uh, um, but they did, my original viewpoint would have been, like, no, just, like, pay back what you owe and, like, quit whining about it. But after talking to him and he being pointed out, like, then, like, all those laws that changed, I was like, this is, like, a little left up. And it reminds me of what we talked about on previous videos on this channel, like the regulatory capture with the pharmaceutical industry, where when you look into it, it's just like this big corrupt scheme, government officials are profiting off of it, you're a regulator, and then you go work for this pharmaceutical company that you're regulating, and you're just like making a bunch of money. And like when you look into really any uh, institution that the government's involved in, and you like dig deep, it's pretty corrupt and this education stuff is quite the scam you the first component is you have the university so the universities have no incentive to make tuition affordable for students you would like w with most um things in economics or whatever like if you overprice your product and then you make it unaffordable to people like there's eventually a cap where people aren't going to be able to afford what you're doing so just the market evens itself out in the case of universities they have no incentive to ever cap their tuitions and why is because they work with the banks and the banks will provide loans for outrageous amounts of money to people who are like 17 years old and they have no credit history and they don't have a reasonable expectation of being able to pay that money back. And uh, if you go back to like one of the early, early videos on this channel where I talk about the history with like all the things that the Clintons are accused of, the Whitewater scandal was essentially them doing this kind of same thing. They were renting out the, or selling these plots of land to people but, and they had like a super messed up, I won't get into the whole thing, you can go back and watch that video, but they had like a super messed up um, contract. And the point of their scheme was you were supposed to sell these plots of land to people that didn't have a great credit history and who you thought were probably going to default on their payments. That's the goal. You want people to not be able to pay. And the banks were here doing that again. And the reason why the banks are doing that is because they passed all those laws with the government where there's no risk for the bank to do that um you can't clear your student loans in bankruptcy you're letting minors who don't necessarily understand what they're signing up for enter into these contracts there's a lot of social pressure on kids to go to college <clears throat> and i mean you could get into a couple other like deeper theories too um with the indoctrination that goes on in universities and why the government might want to send people in that direction but the banks don't have any risk in signing these like the university can charge a million dollars a year in tuition the banks will start giving out loans to these kids for a million dollars because that's what the tuition is but they don't have they're not going to be able to pay it off but it, you don't want them to pay it off. You want them to be stuck in this cycle of 
owing you the interest and just now having to make these payments to you for the rest of their lives. You have customers for life. It's a great business model and the government guarantees that they are allowed to do that. So they all have this incentive to work together to screw over the American people and that's why I have a little more uh, leeway now with the liberal viewpoint on this that like student loans are effed up and people shouldn't have to be able to pay back this interest but the people that I want to pay for it are the people that did it not the American taxpayer who has enough tax burden that they have to worry about right now like I've got like you know 40,000 Ukrainians that I'm supporting right now and I just can't do that and take care of everybody's student loans here in the United States it's like priorities and my priorities are with you Ukrainians right now. So that's just the way that it is. What I'm suggesting is that students should have to go to the bank or whatever. If you want to study gender studies or basket weaving or, you know, queer dance theory or whatever you want to do, that's great. But you're going to have to pay for it yourself. Or Because when you go to the bank to ask to take out these loans, they're not going to give you a million dollars in tuition when you tell them that what you want to study, like this guy says here in the chat, like a $20,000 a year or $200,000 debt and you're only pursuing a job or a career that's going to make you like $20,000 a year. That doesn't make sense. No, that's not going to be a good loan to give out. So because you don't have a good chance that that person is going to be able to make enough money to pay you back. So if you can convince a loan officer to give you $400,000, $500,000 or whatever for tuition to go study dance theory, then great. I don't think that you'll be able to, but good luck to you. Uh, it would be an amazing sale pitch. I would love to see it. But people still have the freedom to go pursue their passions, but the things that will be publicly crowdfunded would be the things that are a betterment to society, something that is going to be useful because that's the purpose then of having the educated population is so people can go have skilled professions and careers that are beneficial to the community so yeah you want to become a doctor you want to become a teacher like those things you would be able to I mean you could even make the argument you know for journalism or whatever and not today's standards but there would be a public interest and a need for things like that so there's a wide latitude for what would count as being towards p the public interest but then universities are also incentivized to make their tuition affordable so the banks would be willing to write those loans that they think then people would be able to pay back that seems to keep everyone accountable without putting unfair burdens on other citizens just my suggestion Thanks for watching this episode of Genuine Questions, and hopefully I'll have the uh, Klaus Schwab clips all finished before I do the next one. If not, I don't really know what I'm going to talk about. So your guess is as good as mine. We'll see what comes up. So leave you on a cliffhanger for this one, but hope you guys tune in next week.